So before we start, this is a 10 litre water container that I got for about three quid. Let's go and pop that into my van. Got a bit of tidying up to do, but I can move my gas heater out the way. Have a little trolley for a bigger uh, quantity of water, which will be heavy. The water can, little jerry can, and I can put it on there. And I'm going to put a bungee around that in time. Bit of a mess in there at the moment. I've got a bit of everything in there. Got lots of spare food and a little chair. And but there's the sink and everything needs tidying. So I wanted to get myself a little pack, and I found one. This is as big or as small as you want it to be, because it has the zips that enable um, rocket pouches to be put on. It also, if you zip them together, makes it a little slimmer. It does have rocket pouches with it and a thick hood. It's quite a lot of money new, but I got it a little cheaper. This is by Combat UK. There's a hundred quid's worth of pack here, 50 litres and I have zipped the side compartment together holding the front onto the back which I'm going to undo now to put it into its full extension giving it its full 50 litres so unzip that side and then spreads out revealing the molly there's one rocket there Not sure about the literage, they look a bit smaller than the British standard PLCA, perhaps eight litres, still a good size, really good size. This it would make an amazing uh, little weekend pack to get my camping gear in. Either the tactical look is going to be up your street or it's not. I'm going to show you a little flaw that it has. If you were thinking of getting this 50 litre Combat UK pack, Let's come to the very top. Expands out to one hell of a size. It's a good size. Good neck opening. I grab the cinch toddle, toddle it in, and it never really closes because of this very small uh, snow collar here. It's about an inch at most. So it's never gonna fully close up. So make sure everything in the pack is protected with dry sacks. Putting the rockets on couldn't be easier. I have the zipper outer right as you look at looking at it from the back. Put that into there, zip it up. The other zip should be on the pouch and not the pack. And again, it's, it is at the bottom, so it zips bottom upwards on both sides. That's where the British PLCE, you zip one up and one down. So I couldn't tell you the uh, teeth, whether these teeth would fit the British PLCE, but certainly the direction wouldn't. But if you were to buy this pack, it comes with the pouches anyway. So I've got a good 50 litres here, or you can choose not to have the pouches on at all and zip it up to make your wide pack a lot slimmer. You can do this on both sides, let's connect it all up. You can see somebody has already taped up the ends there, indicating that this has been used probably at, in the Army Cadet Force, the ACF, and some young lad or lady, young lady has had this in the ACF coming to the top inner under the hood is a meshed compartment which is zippered now this is great for stowing your wash kit because it breathes giving any wet gear a chance to dry out or air out hook and loop there velcro to put your morale patch blood group whatever you want and above that is another 
zipper and this is large you could certainly get some waterproofs in there um, and feel kit I'm actually quite happy with this pack retail 99 pounds nearly 100 UK pounds you wanted 10 for this I walked away and came back to it and he gave it me for seven seven UK pounds a row of ladder for your molly which is usable one two three four by one two three four five six four by six I'd say are usable there so I'd loosen this off a bit on the bottle and pull down on the back here underneath the pack to make this loop and then as I bring the lid over and tighten up the lid in turn would also tighten up this bottom loop that you may have your pad sat inside so let's tighten that up the only flaw that I can see with its design is going to be this top entry not having a big enough snow collar to encompass all its components but if you use dry sacks which everyone's going to anyway it's going to be a good pack I find the company Combat UK I, I don't know where they are in their production regarding whether these whether it's a site for adults or kids uh, there's a lot of kiddie kit mixed in with adult kit and I can see why they're trying to market to a bigger audience but I would rather just go to a specialist site that features genuine X surplus kit uh, and there's plenty of them to find regarding this hundred quid it's expensive for what it is and it is not a very rigid back it's just a sheet of plastic that sits into a sleeve and I think that's been sewn in I'll have a quick look yeah it's been sewn in it's just a little piece of plastic but if you are in Army Cadet Force ACF you are only allowed a maximum of 50 litres I think the reason they've disallowed it is because of the addition of another 10 litre rocket pocket there another 10 litre rocket pocket there bringing 50 60 70 20 litres over so that might have not made the grade for the army cadet force while camping it's it's a good size good size has all the features you need but i am in two minds i was going to sell it uh, and try and make a bit of money but nobody wants to buy so I was going to sell it full of kit uh, such as a sleeping bag, a bivvy, uh, um, a camelback, a stove, everything, fill it ready for ACF and I'll show you that at the end and whether I'll put that on eBay as a pack that's ready for camp with everything you need in I don't know I don't think I'm going to get the price I would want to cover the cost of all the components I'd be willing to put inside there. We'll have a look at that after. Let's have a look in the pack because there's more to show you. What else did I get from the car boot? Also got these rainproof trousers. These are lightweight, they're green so they match the pack. But I have a Le Shark over jacket which is waterproof and I've never been able to find a matching set these aren't matching but the lightweight has all the taped seams access to inner pockets via slits on just one side fly opening there on the front I can expand the bottom on the zip there but you can see it's not big enough to go over a boot yet alone a shoe but you can zip down there probably the reason it was on the car boot you've got to take your shoes and boots off to put them on but it, for a light summer rain and I'm only hiking out in trail runners I think they'll be fine three quid or two quid can't remember so happy with that 
Now this is a weird one. This is a swimsuit, a kiddies swimsuit, little girls swimsuit. But I wanted the material because it is a four way stretch material and I want to make pockets for the side of my pack because I only have the solid state hard mesh which I'm going to cut out and put this in instead so I've got a bit of stretch material put my water bottles in the side and my water filter rather than that hard mesh it doesn't stretch now you need a zigzag stitch for four way stretch mesh or four way stretch fabric like this is and the problem I was having is on one of my packs it just had a solid state mesh no stretch to it I want to get a pair of scissors cut that out make a template cover the template to the four-way stretch material and put a pocket on the side now it's not this pack I'm doing it to I'm doing it to my trekking pack just to give you an idea it would sit on the side of my pack like that and put my drinks in like that On part one of Car Boot Finds Treasures 2022, got a webbing, could be JJ's, and it was tailored webbing, worth about 216, maybe even more. And this is week two, another set of webbing. This is tailored as well. So I've just got them side by side. This looks like a JJ's webbing. And this one in them in DPM sorry is by Dixie's Corner. Which is indicated in the label here. There's the number if you want to get a price of a tailored webbing or even a tailored Bergen. You've got about three different companies online who will tailor kit for you. You've got Dixie's Corner. You've got JJ's here. And another one called Dragon Supplies. It features four utility. So one, two, three and four. And two double ammo. So it's not a shooter's rig and it came with this strap uh, it looks like he tried to do it himself I took it off I wasn't very really happy with it instead I think somewhere I do have some cord that I'd rather put on a bungee which I'll do now if I can find it there it is so this is four mil bungee and I'd rather just have something like that in one of the pouches with the ration pack bags so I put some of my rations in it's in this pouch here so generally I have water water rations here would be cook set and other sundries could use one of these like a field kit and one as a medi pack but generally in this ammo here I put one of them little flasks in every time I do one of these videos there's always someone in the comments well I go wild camping and I don't use webbing N neither do I it's for a bug out there are some people who say things like oh that would be scary that would scare people or that is noticeable you'd be noticed and i'm thinking so what what, what do you think people are going to do when they phone the police that a man has got webbing there's a lot of people who need to grow up on youtube go and watch something you do understand go go watch spongebob square pants or something right then there you have it. 
that bit of cord stops that moving about on the left is the JJ's have the Dixie's corner on the right I want to swap over some of the, the foods make it a little fairer so I always have ginger pudding or chocolate pudding for lunch I always have desserts for lunch this is vegetarian breakfast so I've got breakfast lunch and I could do with an evening meal or something So that is for the JJ's one. Take some of the stuff out of here. I could have the breakfast as an evening meal and swap out to a porridge for the morning. So from that side over to this side. Try and equal some of the, the weight. So this is the Dixie's Corner webbing tailored. This is the tailored, I think JJ's, couldn't be sure, looks like it. I've added the basher pouch there. Twenty-five litre cadet pack and I like to use dry sacks when I can. Keeps everything nice and waterproof and I always collect these dry sacks. That there, the full change or dry clothes. Do you need full change clothes to go hiking, trekking, backpacking? Obviously not because I do get that in the comments as well. Why are you taking a full change of clothes that's heavy when you're going backpacking? I'm not going backpacking. This is a bug out bag build. And even if you don't take this with you, have it on standby. So if you are dressed inadequately, you can grab this and either carry it separately or have the sense to keep a full change of clothes with you. Sleeping bag. Albeit you could just put your sleeping bag into a bivvy. This is what I bought, another dry sack here. This one, like I said, just putting my Arctic sleeping bag in, show you the size it is, 25 litres, easy. Get Efexca sleeping bag into there. But because I have these dry sacks, I'm using it. When you need your bug out kit, it's got to be there for you. So if it is a bitterly cold day and you're not ready for it, at least in your pack. Your pack is ready for it. Anyway, would I take that hiking, trekking? Obviously not. But there are a lot of smart artists in the comment who think they're being smart and they're not. Um, it's, like I said, it's kind of pathetic. And this one is my warm kit. Let's see what I have in here that I got off the boot. I liked this little cap. It's in MTP, I do like MTP, I know a lot of you like the DPM kit, but I've shown a lot of the DPM kit already, that's already on the channel for you to see. Little cap, now I've got him to throw this in as part of the deal, and no matter what I'm buying, if I'm buying in bulk, I'll always pick just one small item up and say look, I'll give you the price you want, just throw me this in for free always always if I'm buying in bulk I, I want something out of the deal and this was it so this was a freebie so now I can start to winterize my MTP kit which formerly I couldn't before because it's a desert uh, BDUs not very good to use in the British Isles where it can get quite cold let's see what else I managed to get this here. This is a head over and I've stitched the head over to make a hat. Now on a previous video I did get a head over and this one hasn't been stitched and all it is is a big tube. Put that over your neck. You can make it into a hat by folding it in a certain way. That, that method is on the channel if you want to know how to. But I found another one. So I have one that's totally unaltered one that's been altered 
it's been double stitched on the inside and this blanket stitch here along the top is just purely for decoration it doesn't actually hold the hat together all the work's been done there so it's purely cosmetic all the stitching there again warm kit is going to be paramount even if you're trekking you, you're going to have some kind of hat gloves a jumper you trust and the means of waterproofing it that is head over keep your neck lovely and warm lovely in the winter but now i've sewn this up and it's kind of like a forage cap and i love this in winter as well now then i was just saying that the desert kit isn't always appropriate for the temperate climate of the british islands so that means the trouser sections of your BDUs in MTP is going to be cold and I wondered if there was a version of MTP that was a heavier fabric for winter and what do you know yeah I found some this is the British Army um, trouser section desert combat these are a lot thicker a lot more rigid durable these are the standard issue um, trouser section fatigues. Very thin, nice in the desert, nice in the heat wave. They keep your legs nice and cool. But I do like wearing these, but inefficient in the winter. That is why I grabbed these when I saw them. Almost like a denim. It is so, so thick. Really like these and they fit. I can't predict that my two or three day bug out bag is actually going to be a two or three days. It might be two or three months, but for long term bug out, you've got to consider whether you'd want to change clothes. And I'm going to leave that up to you. To me, I would, because all I have is a 50 litre pack, which fits everything. But these elements here fit into 50 litres and I don't have a problem carrying them in a cadet pack like this. Now the cadet pack is a hell of a lot lighter than um, a full size British Army PLCE Bergen. The pad sits on the front and I know that are people who then are going to put the food and the water in these side pouches. If that's your preferred option to carry the weight of water and food then that is how you travel i would rather travel my surplus food stove set the basher and everything else not mentioned in this video here on a webbing so you've seen one of the webbings which was the dixie's corner the jj's is matching to this mtp five quid each that's about its value roll top QR clips. 25 litres will fit a sleeping bag and easily your dry kit and your warm kit. Now, like I said, I'm going to leave it up to you in a bug out situation whether you have a full change of clothes and the ability to waterproof them clothes. I've heard somebody with very little experience tell me he saw somebody on another channel and don't want to name the channel insist you don't need uh, warm change clothes and you don't need a means to waterproof them now I guess this other guy he's a bus crafter likes to hide in a valley is talking about a trek and I don't carry spare clothing on a trek nothing probably socks underwear a spare t-shirt in case I get sweaty and that's me done that's me done I have a warm kit though always in the form of a, a jumper and a means to keep it warm and dry that is it but for a bug out situation it's different to going on a weekend trek what if your bug out situation overruns the two or three days that you've allocated then a dry sack of clothing which isn't that big 
and fits under the lid of my pack I think is going to be I'm not going to say necessary but a welcome 